Welcome to the podcast. You are listening to Silas from The Realscapers right now. I'm here with Callum, who you're all familiar with, but we're also joined with two new members of the family, John, Tyler God, and Ben, otherwise known as Yak of Clubs, I think it is, or is it... Yeah, that, that's can, correct. You can tell us. Okay, excellent. <laughs> I get that a bit mixed up sometimes. Anyway, uh, we'll let them tell you a bit about themselves now. Uh, my name is John. I'm also known as Tireless God. Uh, I make YouTube videos, currently doing a Bank Sold, Bank Made series, sold by entire bank and trying to make everything back from scratch. Uh, you may also know me from my Twitter account, RuneScape Humor, in case any of you guys follow me there for some of my sometimes good and sometimes really facepalm-worthy tweets that I send <laughs> out there. So, uh, yeah, that's a little bit about myself. Ben, how about you? Hello, I am Ben, otherwise known as Yak of Clubs, and I've been playing RuneScape since about 2001. I also have my own YouTube channel, which is 90YRS, and I've been making videos there for maybe a year, year and a half, doing guides, vlogs, all this other kind of stuff. So, yeah, I was lucky enough to be invited by RealScapes to join their channel, and I'm very excited about it. <laughs> Woohoo! <laughs> okay. <laughs> so, Callum, you're going to lead us into what we'll be discussing today. Yes, first on the list is the Marjorie Memories. Uh, oh, close enough. Is that how you, that how you <laughs> pronounce it? <laughs> yes, Marjor- you, you, tr- you tried before and, and you failed even more this time, but you know what, we'll, we'll just accept it. Okay, uh, John, do you want to take the lead with this one? Yeah, sure. Um, this is basically going to be, uh, as Ben kind of mentioned earlier, uh, to get you hard, uh, as he would say, for the Fate of the Gods quest. <laughs> coming out um <laughs> and well, that was uh, inappropriate no not at all no 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 uh that's how i feel about runescape all the time when i play guys um <laughs> that those xp gains man um that's why i type so slowly <laughs> <laughs> anyway so this is basically kind of a little look into uh the history of the majorat uh, in different ways. It says we're following uh, Karshai. I'm terrible with these names, honestly. Karshai? Yeah. Okay. I think I can maybe pronounce <laughs> like 20... I can pronounce probably 20% of the names in RuneScape. <laughs> like, especially when you're fighting like Armadale, like the bosses, like it's like Kajakziguk or some stuff. Like, I have no <laughs> idea. The, the like, bosses that are awful. Oh, oh, no, oh I, it I is the Zami bosses. Them. Sorry, yeah. not not the uh, Armadale. That's right. They're like horrible. I have no idea how to pronounce them. But it uh, just kind of gives you a little bit of uh, background with some Majorite. Uh Ben, I think you were actually talking about this a little earlier. I think you might have some more insightful information. Uh, yeah, this is supposedly a lead-on from the other mini-quest that was released prior to a previous quest. I actually don't remember which one it was, but it was called uh, Kozchi's Troubles. And basically, you followed Kozchi, or his Majra name is Kashai, um, and he was regaining his memory. And basically, what he wants us to do now is gather all of these other information about the other Majorat, what they've been up to uh, in his absence. And so we're going to find out a bit more about the Majorat as a race, and hopefully get a bit of background information about Zaras and uncover some other interesting things before the main quest is released a few days later. They also mentioned they're going to get a nice, healthy chunk of divination experience, uh, bonus and regular. So oh, I'm yeah. very much looking forward to that. That will carry me all the way to 99, I'm hoping. Um, which is also going to be helpful for the people who don't have the divination requirement for Fate of the Gods just yet. Because it is quite a high yeah. uh, requirement for a, a pretty new skill. So Th- That is actually pretty nice of them. Purpose. Yeah, it is. I, I agree. It's it's a good way to sort of close that gap for people who may not be quite there yet. Yeah. They, Lazy people who can't bear to stand there for hours and just <laughs> just grind it out like some of us have. Exactly. It's like wood cutting, just so really, mad. really slow wood cutting. <laughs> I wonder how much divination experience we'll actually get. Because, I mean, from the Hashian Skull event, we got, what was it, about 200, 250k divination experience. It says so I reckon they'll probably hunks. be comparable to that. Yeah. It says hefty hunks, but it might be like the combination of the bonus and the regular is a nice hefty hunk. Of course, so, it'll probably depend on what your level is at the time as well. Not necessarily, because yeah, with quests, it's a set amount. Oh yeah, yeah I guess. So. Oh, yeah. <laughs> that, that would suck if I you guess. like complete a quest unknowing your level's determinant of the reward. <laughs> You're just some like low level that just like hasn't trained divination yet, and it's like here's twenty extra experience. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks. Oh, yeah, okay, it says level 60 requirement for divination, so I mean, that'll be good, so you, you, it won't be overpowered getting like 20k experience at level 1, it'll probably be somewhat mm. relevant to 60+, plus. that's that's good. 
That is pretty good. Yeah, if it's a 60 level requirement, I'm assuming it gets you something, a good little on your way, maybe like 65 or something like yeah. that. Yeah. Once you use the bonus, of course. Which, and by the way... says here... No, Sorry, continue. No, go ahead, Silas. Oh, well, you're still going on about the XP, but I was just going to say, it also mentions that uh, you'll get some benefits, you know, in uh, when you're traveling Freneske, which is exciting, from doing that quest, the Marjorie Art Memories. It says, add I some aid in your future romps. I don't know, it says future <laughs> romps. <laughs> what sure what, what is means. a romp? I don't know. Do I, you know Sounds like a very British romps. word. It does, doesn't it? <laughs> going to have a bit of a romp around Freneske. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, that's bombastic. Some in your future <laughs> I'm, I'm, I'm just going to start using that in America and see if it just catches on. And if you hear Americans start saying romp, it was because of me, guys. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Modern day. Okay. Okay. I'm changing so, the American language. So next on the list, we have Fate of the Gods. Um, on the behind the scenes, it says in three words, Zaros is back. Um, I think we're all a little bit excited about this one. Ben, if you would like to lead, lead Ooh, the conversation. Again. I feel honoured. Um, the lawman. Yes, <laughs> the lawman. The lawman. Well, you shouldn't feel honoured, we're just not as educated and we're putting it on you. <laughs> okay, well, that's. I, I still feel somewhat special. Let me have this one thing. Okay. Okay, so, okay. as I was for all the previously released new quests, such as uh, The World Wakes and what? Uh, what's the other one? Missing Presumed Death. I am very excited for this new quest, Fate of the Gods. And basically this quest, we're going to be learning a lot about Zaros, about what he's been doing in his absence, what his plans for Gilinora, and um, I'm looking forward to it. It says we're going to be able to investigate the homeland of the Majorat, which is Freneske. And that is something we've never, ever really heard about before, let alone experienced. And so I'm really excited to explore the lands. If you guys have seen the concept art in the BTS, it looks absolutely amazing. It really does. And yeah. as, as John compared it to, yeah. it kind of looks like Stargate, did you say? Yeah, the, 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 it's actually called the World Gate. It says right there. It oh, says wow. the secrets of the World Gate. So we have the Stargate. I'm, I'm just thinking it's it, it might be something close. <laughs> yeah. Anyway, well, it all looks pretty damn badass. <laughs> wait, wait, what did you say? Damn badass? Yes. <laughs> okay. Why not? <laughs> Sorry, the, 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 the way it came through on, on my mic, it sounded different. I, 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 was, I, was, I was just clarifying. All right. <laughs> That's what you said. <laughs> so anyway, they mentioned that the requirements for this quest include 79 magic, 76 slayer, 75 divination, 73 agility, 67 summoning, and decent combat stats, which they mentioned over 80, I believe. So it's going to be quite mm. an experience required quest, which I'm looking forward to. I know, yeah. John, you mentioned something about um, they... Some of the players weren't very happy with the difficulty levels of past Grandmaster quests. That was actually Silas mentioning that. Yes, thank Close you. Close enough. John? <laughs> um, yeah, enough. I did. I mentioned that before. Basically, players weren't... Oh, well, it's something that I heard, I think, Osborne talking about in uh, the Game Blast live stream thing they did. Basically saying that, yeah, we've been spoon-fed, um, you know, help in the quests lately, and players have been quite dissatisfied with the lack of difficulty. Yeah. So I'm looking forward to maybe some more quests that make me pull my hair out like Underground Pass did back oh in the my day. God, I hate that <laughs> no. quest so much. Uh, may they never recreate something even close to that quest. <laughs> what if just I swear in the future, knowing Jagex and their troll nature, they're they're gonna make like the above ground pass or something like that. <laughs> <laughs> I Actually, I yeah. I don't know. They they'd probably do something like that, just knowing them. Well yeah, there was a joke going around about one big favor. Um <laughs> That's and actually... it would be funny if it was just you had to do one little task and like everyone would rage as soon as they read the name of the quest before realizing you'd have to catch a trout or something and you'd get <laughs> you know, a good 100k XP. But a guy can dream. Or the task just like seems ridiculous, but it's extremely easy. Like, I need you to retrieve this and he just forgot it's in his kitchen or something. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> That'd be kind of crazy. But yeah, they, they were talking about how easy it is and uh, I, I was saying... I really want quests to come out that, like, require three level 90 skills. 
and are extremely difficult. I, I know players would be like, oh, but that's too hard. And it's just like, well, that's the point, is it's hard. Yeah. You, it's something to achieve. The rewards from it would be great. Uh, I was saying how uh, Firemaker's Curse had like a level 90 firemaking requirement, and then they lowered it to like 70 or 75. I forget what the requirement is now, but that's a like, but the, the experience between 70 and 90 is dramatic. And then they just dropped it because the players were complaining it's too high level requirement. I feel like with the ability that we have now in RuneScape to get levels at the rate that we have, I feel like those high level requirements should sustain. If this and was RuneScape Classic, I mean, I can understand. Fire making is a pretty newbie skill. <laughs> yeah, exactly. It's, it's not pretty like easy to buy your way up. Plus prayer or anything. They're not going to ask yeah. you to spend 300 mil or anything. It's, it's fire making. It doesn't mm -hmm. take that long. And it's, not, and it's not like you get like 30k an hour XP or anything. Like, it's pretty mm -hmm. fast, rapid XP gain, so... Yeah, exactly. AFK I really too. think that was no excuse for dropping it from 90 to 70. Or whatever it was. I, I, I may be wrong on the level requirement. I just know it was drastic, the uh, level change. But this, this one actually seems fairly good. They have a good range of different, you know, level 70s. As, as we were saying earlier, uh, 75 Divination and 67 Summoning are probably going to be the two. And 73 Agility. I know a lot of people don't like to train Agility past 70 because it's pretty rough. Um, but those three skills alone are going to be pretty crazy uh, for people to try to get ready for this quest. So I am kind of excited... And they did say that this quest, I think I saw in the Game Blast as well, they said the creatures during this one are going to be a little bit tougher than they have before because we've really wanted to fight. And this game might be able to provide, or this game, this quest might be able to provide <laughs> us with that. <laughs> oh, God. I hope it's nothing like the fight from Birthright of the Dwarves. That had me. You know, I was pretty mad. I actually didn't find it that bad. I managed to do it the first time. Like, I'd watched the guide and stuff, but... Yeah. yeah, I got well, it on my see, second I, time. I used the door method, so I like, trapped one outside and killed the other, then went back to the other and killed him. But, uh, oh, yeah, so I, I didn't. So Callum cheated. <laughs> <laughs> I wasn't cheating. I was just, you know, if he doesn't want to open the door himself, then it's his own fault. <laughs> what is this contraption? Situation. How did I not get past? <laughs> that, <laughs> that reminds me of uh, this, this, this <laughs> picture. Uh, it, it had like a guard on like the other side of, of a fence and like someone was ranging him and he's like there is nothing I can do I must accept my fate <laughs> <laughs> it's so true uh, oh my gosh it, it's, it's really funny they also mentioned that um, you're going to decide for yourself whether Zaras is worthy to return to Gil or not and there are a few changes that they mentioned that are going to be like player decided but that doesn't really make sense People can't, like, some people can't have it so that Zaros does come back, and then some people mm. deny Zaros from coming back. That's not, you can't have that maybe, big of a difference maybe between do, people's law. Maybe it'll be similar to the world events or um, the polling. Like, if a majority wants Zaros to... Please don't have a poll basically. for this. <laughs> that yeah. makes sense, because the quest is going to be relevant all throughout time. Like, if people do it in three years' time or something, yeah. obviously you, oh. you can't... Good point. Yeah, yeah that is. so that that wouldn't apply then. Good Which point. is kind yeah, of weird for for one thing because if you uh, realize Bandos is dead, but if you do uh, missing presumed death, he's in the meeting. <laughs> he's just chilling there. No biggie. <laughs> Wait a minute. Weren't you dead? <laughs> now, yeah, I just stuff like that. Can't funny. Be with the errors. There's a funny note here. Uh, sorry, not a note, but just uh, in their paragraph written about, you know, more than Zaros's life is... And it says, is a stake, not at stake. <laughs> <laughs> is a Zaros's stake? life is just one big stake. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man, that is funny. That's, that's actually pretty good. <laughs> is a stake. Oh, wow, I actually see that. That's kind of funny. Yeah. So it makes me wonder, it may be similar to... What was the... They read a quest recently. It was... Dark War, Black Knight's Fortress or something? What's what's it called now? Prince Ali's Anyone? Rescue. No, no. The, the oh, the um, the... oh gosh, I know. Uh, Chivalry's Dead. Yeah, the, no, Death of Chivalry. That's Death of Chivalry, there we yeah. go. Dang it. Anyway, I, that that one, <laughs> you sort of, they, they gave you options to sort of help out Sarah Doman, but it led to the same thing anyway. Basically, you had the option between to be like, to fully go with Sarah Doman's uh, requests and stuff. Or you could sort of say no and be really passive-aggressive towards them, but it sort of led to the same outcome. I have a feeling maybe it might end up being like that. It sort of gives you these different options in chat and stuff. Sort of makes you feel like you've got an option, but it may end up or being it, that it, it leads to the same path anyway. 
Mm -hmm. It could just be as simple as give, giving you access to different parts of Frenesuke or things like that, depending on the options yeah. that you yeah. choose. I feel yeah. like it could be uh, limited. Like it, it depends on what happens at the end of the quest as well. Like we could all have the decision to bring him back or not. Like we 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 could say like yes, us ourselves br uh, want to bring him back, and he's back. Or we can say no, we don't want to, and then someone else brings him back during the quest. Like that might be yeah. what's going on there as well. Yeah, I think I almost speak like for us in all... uh, the world wakes where we voted ending. to save Gothics or something. Mm -hmm. But anyway, someone else ended up yeah. like slick standard of killing him anyway. So yep. that's that's a good point actually. It may does not like... matter what we do because someone else just goes ahead and does it. I still I would remember like that to moment. See Zaros back. <laughs> if he came back, yeah. I would be pretty happy because yeah. I like all of his really concept art is story. awesome. Yeah, yeah, he looks awesome. All cool and purple. And so, in terms of rewards, guys, they haven't mentioned anything about rewards. What are you expecting from this? Well, we oh, know that. that there's a poll for the new ultimate ability to come out, which sadly was overwhelming for a new um, combat damage dealing ability, which really surprised me. Well, I take that back. That did not surprise me, but <laughs> I'm, I'm very upset in the decision as there were other options for new and unique things that currently aren't in the game but could really advance the game, but other players just decided to do more damage. We've got plenty of combat abilities as it is. You don't need an extra damage ultimate ability. Like, you're not even going to end up using it because there are just so many as it is. Yeah. There, there are already a lot of ultimates I don't use at all. <laughs> what are you guys talking about? It's all about adrenaline, yo. <laughs> Gosh. You are the reason we cannot have nice things. You should not be allowed to vote in this poll, damn it. <laughs> Really it is, it is times like that I feel that the power of the player idea is really limited. It's just going to limit our options going forward, well, which is kind of disappointing. I mean, the current the current poll about having a non-combat boss or a combat boss, I mean, it's overwhelmingly yes. on, on, on the uh, combat boss, obviously. But w we've never seen a non-combat boss. That would be awesome. I mean, they were discussing exactly. something about that. I think it was at RuneFest, one of the, the talks. They were talking about uh, creating one, and you'd have to do all different skills to, like, work against this, whatever it is. Um, and people have pretty much voted against it. I'm a bit upset. I'm, people are afraid of change. Yeah, yeah. I'm, I'm a little surprised because whereas, you know, damage dealing, I can see people in the game want to, you know, be more powerful and do more damage. Like that, okay, I can understand why you were kind of weary about the other things because we don't have them in the game yet, so we can't see, okay? But this is game-changing, like... Yeah. The skilling boss is something new, unique, and actually, for me, exciting to, like, wonder how it's going to work. It's not so much that, you know, it's it's too obscure. It's literally something new for the game that we've never seen. I'm I'm a little bit surprised it's really as far behind as it is. It's like, I think it's like 60-something to 30-something around that percentage-wise. Yeah, it's, yeah. it's The difference between it is phenomenal, and I don't know why it's that much. It's like if you think about it, what if they'd introduced the power to play in, say, 2007? Mm -hmm. RuneScape would be basically the same as it is in 2007 today, and then <laughs> so much would be missed out on. Like, yes, some of the changes are really scary and sort of you question the future of RuneScape, but then without these changes like EOC, RS3, all these new exciting updates, RuneScape would just be stale and most likely dead. Do you know well, what bothers me is they're polling the 120 capes. Mm. Like, something that's purely personal achievement slash cosmetic, has no effect on the game whatsoever, you don't get a new emote, you don't get new stats, there's nothing new, it's not required for trim completionist cave, just purely, I enjoy this skill so much, look at this level that I've reached, like, basically, I've reached 120. And people are probably going to vote no for the most part. I hope they vote yes because that's just really cool. It just goes to show some sort of accomplishment for someone, which I think is wonderful. But it's no advantage, it's just cosmetic. It's, exactly. It's all it is. Just exactly. Cosmetic. It's not gonna hurt anyone. And and they're putting it to a poll. This like this is just content that should just come out in the game for for skillers and, and people looking for achievements. But no, we're gonna put it to a poll. We put too put, much yeah. of this game to a poll. Well, the thing is, I remember someone saying in the forums or Twitter or something, and he basically summed it up. I agreed with him. We're not game developers. I mean, we don't... I've never developed a game or created a game. Um, and I think they are giving us way too much 
say, and uh, I think that's a slight problem with the uh, powers of the players, but anyway. Moving on. See, I don't later know. Anything anything Silas got shark fists. <laughs> I did get shark fists, and they are effing amazing. I'm, I'm Ben. Ben, Ben, and I are pissed off right now because everyone else has like twenty katanas, and we are still sitting here like, here's your small prismatic star. Like, <laughs> like give Story me time. something shiny, please. <laughs> Callum got a swag stick. I'm honestly jealous. I've always wanted a swag stick. And, and Sil- a swag bag. Silas has shark fists and a goblin hat. <laughs> yeah, everyone around me is getting cool things. I'm just sitting here like, I want nice things too. It's because you're maxed. <laughs> you're of no use to them anymore. You don't play. Yeah. You just sit there killing monsters. They don't want to give me nice things because I have a maxed account. Yeah. <laughs> the logic's there if you Pretty look much. hard enough. Gosh. So, should we shall we move on to the next part of the behind the scenes? Uh, yeah, was there anything else? I I'm pretty sure we covered it. Uh, reward wise, how about instead of yeah, we, we kind of drifted off with the combat ability. Oh yeah. Nice. But what, what is there any other reward you guys can see? I mean, I see there are required skills, so probably a little experience and all of those. Is there anything else you guys might think? Could it come I would like quest? to see a nice chunk of Slayer experience, to be honest. I'd be looking forward to that. I know there was a good chunk of experience at the end of The World Awakes, actually. Um, it was, was it like almost 200 or 300k in XP lamps or something? You got yeah, 300k, but it had to be in different skills because it had to be balanced. Right. <laughs> Damn it, Gothic's Law. I know. Yeah, I'm not too so... concerned with the rewards. I'm just really looking forward to a new area to explore and obviously, you know new bosses and stuff will come out of that. And a Do you reckon maybe more. we'll be able to visit Freneske after the quest? Will there be maybe a new yes, area? Yes, I think, for sure. I think we're, we are going to have to for sure because I think those new dragons are coming out with this quest. Oh yeah. Uh, we didn't talk about so, that actually. The what? The Celestial Dragons. We haven't talked about them. Yeah, the Celestial Dragons. They said uh, they're coming out with a new quest and I'm pretty sure it's this one. So I think when, when you go back to Freneske, uh, it's going to ha- give you access to a dungeon with these in it. Mo- I, have mo- the that, I have the feeling that um, a lot of the game's lore is going to take place in sort of some sort of, you know, contrasting battle between the Elf City and Freneske. That'll be like the polar opposites of good and evil. Mm-hmm. That would be That's cool. That's just my theory on it. Yeah. Oh, I actually did have a topic that I wanted to talk about, which just just real quick, because this can go really in depth if we wanted to. Uh, <laughs> do you think that Jagex is fo- focusing uh, too much on the gods? And we're kind of being taken out of RuneScape itself. Because in the past year, almost every quest and everything to come out in the game has been very god-related. Do you think it's a bad thing that they're doing this? Or do you think it's a good thing? I, I, I'm just kind of curious about it. Because I, I was thinking about that. All these quests coming well, out are very... I find it hard to see any other direction that they could have gone in. Yeah. I mean, there are a lot of quests in game that don't have to do with the gods, you know? Yeah, well, yeah, I guess people, because the the gods are more of a um, a strong sort of part of the storyline and permanently affect the whole history of the game, whereas, you know, making a cake for a chef isn't really that satisfying. <laughs> <laughs> I guess that's, that's true. true. That's true. That's my favorite quest, Silas. Jeez. <laughs> <laughs> All right, we, 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 we can go ahead and move on about that. I just thought I'd bring that up and see well, what you guys' I, I quick think thoughts that... are. It is probably one of the most interesting parts of RuneScape, but as long as they mix it up with other... Like they did, uh, what was it, the Bacon Quest? Yes, what was that they about? did just, the Bacon Quest Just recently. occasionally non-serious, non-God-related content, just to mix it up a bit, just so it keeps it fresh, and maybe if yeah. the God content is for everyone, it's good to have some other options as well. That well, is they nice. have comic relief, like the Hunt for Red Rack t- Tube or whatever it is. Those que- the Penguin Quests, they're hilarious. Yeah, that's um, true, that's true, actually. That's a great quest line, and that's got nothing to do with the gods. Yep. I do enjoy that. Alrighty. So moving, moving on. on. <laughs> Small uh, yet awesome yeah. changes. So uh, continuing with the power of the player vibe, Jake's want to sort of take in a lot of the player suggestion things that have been on the forums, in game, all that kind of stuff. And first up, which is way overdue, they're making changes to the bank. Praise the bank. Gothics. Yay! <laughs> so basically, everything. Praise as Helix. It stands, Gosh. This is Praise Helix. Oh man! So as Praise it currently stands, you, 
I'm you sorry. cannot actually uh, wear things directly from the bank. You've got to exit the bank and then manually equip things and go back into the bank if you want to do anything else. So annoying. Which is totally stupid because prior to the RS3, you could just equip things with the bank, just easily swap between equipment screens and the bank. and yep. It was all fine, but for some reason when RS3 came out, they're like, no, people don't need that. Let's just delete that. Maybe they won't notice. And oh, but they did. Like the, day, the very first day, people were like... Where is it? And then maybe like one year later, they're like, oh yeah, people want this. So here it is. Better late than never is what I think. You know what's annoying is the button's still there and it takes you to a screen to change your armors, but then your bank interface closes. Yeah, Yeah. exactly. It's like... Very frustrating. It's not a fix. That is not a fix. It's like, like, thank you? (laughs) It's like, they know the problem's there, they're just not addressing it. God, it's it's been so long. Yeah, exactly. (laughs) Do you remember when this button used to work? <laughs> uh, but it's good. If you've seen the BTS, it looks really intuitive. Much faster, it does. easier. Just I'm excited for it. Much faster, Seamless such convenience. <laughs> uh, Next so, on the list. Uh, yeah. Changes to the circus. Does anybody actually still do the circus? I'm curious. Yes, Callum. Yes, I do. I love it. Callum I loved it when it first came out, and I do it every week. Oh, is it every week? Yeah, every week. Yeah, once a week. Um, uh, I did it because um, once you do what's that fire making quest the fire makers cu- curse quest fire makers curse and yeah there's a few other quests they give additional ads to the circus um, and I don't know I really enjoy them but they're actually updating the agility part of it which is you're on a tightrope and you uh, do some flips and stuff and juggle chin chompers and random did stuff like that um, but then, t- did I say tightrope I meant tight I heard you I heard tightrope <laughs> <laughs> Let's go with type rope, why not? Um, they're, improving, <laughs> <laughs> they're improving the XP you gain from agility because you only got like 7k or 6k XP mm. from that. So that's, that's good. Rough. And I worth. like it. Well, it's not, yeah, it's almost not worth it. So, um, yeah, I'm excited. And they and uh, get to... the cosmic. Yeah, if you go. <laughs> <laughs> and the, uh, all the uh, rewards you get from that are now cosmetic overrides, which is cool. So I can wield a giant. Hand as a my god sword instead. <laughs> Ooh, yeah, I'm looking forward to that. I think it's. It, I think they should do this more often. Um, a lot of the things they give you just actual physical items, which obviously they're trying to get you to buy keepsake keys if you want to actually wear it as part of your override outfit. But and yeah. I really appreciate what they're doing here to make it another option to um, just make it override right away. Exactly, exactly. It's get rid of all this junk in your bank and everywhere. It's just, it's just yep. a good idea. I like that because I I actually used to. Uh, before I got my Max Cape, and before uh, the actual Solomon store came by, my outfit when I walked around was the Firemaker's uh, outfit. I had the top and the bottom, and I had my Black Ibis boots. That was kind of my thing, and my Slayer Cape. That, that was my whole getup. <laughs> so that's kind of cool that they're doing that. And is that, is that it to the circus changes? Is there anything else that's happening? Yeah. Uh, well, map. Like map. Oh, oh yeah. Well, map is getting a change. I'm not actually just, sure what the cha- amount I, of I think it's just more information uh, yeah. as to like quests and like requirements. Like when you hover over icons, it actually kind of gives you a little description rather probably, than it okay. just being something on a map. Yeah, it's probably because at the moment it's just a red exclamation mark and yeah, it's a bit exactly. frustrating. It say oh, sorry, <laughs> not a red one, a blue uh, blue star thingy, blue whatever star, it is. Yeah. But I think it's, it's like definitely geared for lower yeah. levels, and you know, because ma- people who are high level, they they know everything is. They've probably done a lot of the quests, but for new people coming into the games, it's probably a lot nice for them mm-hmm. to be able to see just at a glance what they need, if it's worth going here. And I think it's just yeah, it's, it's a good change. Definitely. You know what they should do is they should, um, when you're on the map looking at those highlights, you should be able to click on them and it brings you to the official RS Wiki page about it. That would be really good, actually. That would actually be a really smart idea for them them to do. So for new players, it kind of gives them the informational page as to what they're looking at. Hashtag ideas. (laughs) Alrighty. Uh, So we have additionally the long-awaited offhand bind slots are coming to Dungeoneering, which I did not know were that long-awaiting, but um, (laughs) I guess they were. Um, So it it looks like allowing you to store shields and offhands without penalty. So that's just like a nice little thing for those who do a little Dungeoneering. I'm assuming it means for your bind slots for that that thing. For those of us who don't do Dungeoneering often, what penalties are there? 
I mean, in, in the first place. Basically, it takes up one of... You've only got three or four slots um, mm-hmm. to actually wear items that are bound to you. So, basically, it was it made much more sense to wear a two-handed item because um, oh, yeah. it only took up one slot. Because otherwise, yep. you could only wear, like, a, a shield, a sword, and, like, a helmet or anything. But now you can wear, you know... You can dual wield effectively in Dungeoneering, which is really good. It's been... It, I, I can't believe it took them this long to do, but it, it's good that it's here. I was actually legit about to ask, wait, there are shields in Dungeoneering? Because I honestly have never <laughs> seen a person who used them. But, Nobody and then I realized, yes, they, they, they do exist, just no one cares to use them. <laughs> exactly. It's just I not totally worth taking they up exist. the extra buying slot. Oh, it's really not when you're trying to just run through the floor and stuff. Actually... Actually, with uh, quick switching now, it might be useful just to have thrown a resonance every so often. Since since there's no penalty for switching from one style to the other, shields might actually become a, maybe a thing in Dungeoneering. Probably not, but it might be. So the ribbon. <laughs> yeah, that's... <laughs> <laughs> nice little pause there. That's so, <laughs> so how about them ribbons, guys? Um... <laughs> But I, I guess we're able to be cu- customizing the ribbon. I guess that's what it's called. I never knew it had a specific name or that you call those a ribbon. Um, but that's like the little hot bar where you have all your little actions and stuff on it. So instead of you having a long list of, ooh, here's all your melee abilities or something like that, you can just go ahead and throw your prayer on there and, and some other things. So your guys' thoughts on the customizable ribbon. I don't know. It Love seems it. a bit arbitrary, if you ask me. It's, it, I like it how it is now. I don't really see why they need to change it or make it so you can move things around on there. Well, then you can just leave it the way it is then, and I'll change yeah. it. <laughs> okay. Yeah, cool. What, what, what would you guys change it to? What are some things that you're interested in? Yeah, what would you change it to, Carl? I'd probably take things... Out. Am I able to take things out mm, to make it yeah. smaller? Yeah. yeah. Uh, I don't know about resizing. I don't know about Definitely. smalling change all the icons. And if you look at the BTS video, they've got like a whole list of all the different things you can replace it with. Oh, uh, cool. Well, I, I saw, for example, one of them was uh, an inventory icon, so you can access your inventory directly just by pressing the button on the thing. But I don't... You, you can already kind of do that. If you just hover yeah. over the second red icon, it just brings up an extra option. So I don't know. Maybe it's just a direct link? It's, I guess. It's, I don't know. I'm, I'm a bit confused, but it'll be good to see what exactly it is. It, it can't hurt to have more customization, I guess. If you don't want to customize it, you don't have to. Just Mm. people who might not want to, then awesome. Exactly. (laughs) Just some more customization. Exactly. And as always with every month as it comes out, we have a Solomon Store update. Surprise, they don't have some sort of promotional thing kind of popping in there as well. They normally talk about like what the next thing and the key is going to be. But maybe this month we're not going to have one of those things. Or maybe this promotion at the beginning of the month is what our promotion is. But um, So that's pretty good. Uh, and then coming up at the bottom, we have what says uh, One of a Kind versus Revolution. As you guys may know, the quest One of a Kind kind of got pushed off because the Revolution update came out. Uh, it was just a post on the thread, became really, really hyped, and uh, they decided to put priority on that, which is kind of, kind of understandable with the uh, backing behind it. So that month, which was that month, <laughs> that quest, that month, which was supposed to come out last month, um, <laughs> that quest is now just being pushed off to this time. So if you want more information on that, go ahead and check out that BTS. I actually but, thought that they introduced Revolution because One of a Kind wasn't ready yet, and they sort of wanted to put in some kind of updates. So they thought, hey, Revolution is pretty much ready, so they sort of pushed that out, was my understanding. Oh. If you actually look at the BTS, they sort of, when they were talking about why they delayed One of a Kind, um, they showed pre- they showed uh, the, the player in Mr. Mordo's office, one of the main characters of this new quest, yeah. and that was basically, they recycled the environment from the old random event, but then they also cut to uh, a new office, which they totally revamped. It looks you're absolutely right. amazing. You're right, you're right. So I think they sort of, they they were going to recycle some things, but then they decided, you know, that's maybe not good enough. Let's just redo it, which I thought was pretty much worth it because, you know, the old office was outdated and would be just, yeah. Actually, uh, I, I do I, remember I them. Yep, I remember them saying that uh, might have been at the game blast thing where they said, yeah, we were going to bring it out, but um, we decided to just push it back a little bit and uh, make it the best quest that it could possibly be. 
Yeah. All right. Yeah. Yeah. You guys are right now that I'm actually thinking about it. You're wrong. Uh, oh my god. <laughs> <laughs> my feelings. They're hurt. When, when um, I first heard that, I thought that was some sort of bullshit excuse. Say, like, yeah, we sort of it's, it's not ready yet. I don't know. Whatever. But it, we can actually see the changes. It, it was worth doing. The environments for some of the places are just a lot nicer. Yeah. So that's nice. Definitely. Mm. All right. Got to love a so, good environment. Yeah, I'm, I'm glad. Oh, and, and just real quick, uh, for you guys, in case you're interested in talking about it, what are your thoughts on Revolution? I don't see why not. Really? It's awesome for Slayer. I wouldn't really use it anywhere else. There are a couple of bugs with it, I, I find. Uh, for example, it'll interrupt your Revolution, and you've got to wait a few seconds for it to kick back in. But, I mean, it's good. Can't complain. I'm, I'm, yet, I'm yet to actually use it, because I've, I've been away when it came out. But uh, looking forward to doing some more Slayer with it. God, you noob. Um, <laughs> yeah, so, sure. so far seems good. I, I've seen a lot of high-level players kind of have some problems with it because they said they're taking, you know, challenge out of the game in certain ways, which, I mean, understandable in certain aspects. But, Are they um, joking? That's no. literally what RuneScape was before. That's like how it was for the past, what, 10 years before the EOC came out. Yeah, they're, they're, they're basically <laughs> complaining that it makes the game a lot easier. Oh my god. In in a way, because you don't have to push the buttons and they're purists and all that stuff. Purists? Mm -hmm. God. So, I think yeah. they're just anal. Anally retentive people. <laughs> Anally retentive. <laughs> have not heard that used in a long time. EOC comes um, out, no, it's too difficult, too much effort. Revolution comes out, no, it's too easy. <laughs> god damn it. <laughs> Stop making the hard content it's easy. It's because Gothics is dead. Yeah, exactly. There is no, no balance. balance. <laughs> there is no balance. <laughs> we need an hour ah. of ethics. <laughs> but yeah, the, the, the re re revolution overall, I have no problem with it. I think it's a great update, and it's definitely needed uh, in some manner. But uh, yeah, the community has been back and forth on it, so I mean, it's kind of difficult <laughs> to say. I think a lot more of the people that are for it would probably be potheads. <laughs> Because <laughs> they just get blazed and like, yeah, man, autopilot. <laughs> I don't see why they didn't rename it to 420 blaze it mode. Anyway. Wow. That is uh, awesome. And on that note. Uh, Are we wrapping it up? Uh, unless, unless anyone else has anything to say. Um, I really, really, really enjoy having a golden gnome pet. It's so cool. Oh, yes. Yes, that's and, nice. And, uh, hopefully, that's hopefully nice. John and Ben, um, they, they might get one too in the future if we're able to, you know, pull we're another golden back -back. gnome out of the hole. Yeah, yeah back-to-back back, um, awards, man. Yeah. Heck yeah. 2014, 2013. It's gonna happen. Oh, yeah. I'm coming for you. You heard it here first, folks. <laughs> Somebody end it. Oh, <laughs> please. please. No, we, we, we need to make it awkward. <laughs> Alrighty. So, okay, I, I guess I'll close it. Uh, thanks again, everyone, for tuning in. This was the uh, BTS for March 2014. Uh, we got Callum, Silas, Ben, and myself. Uh, Tireless God, John, whatever you want to call me. Uh, we hope you guys enjoyed... Dark. Tireless Doge. Um, but we will be trying to uh, be putting out a BTS every month, so be sure to tune in, check it out. Leave us your feedback. If you had any comments on what we had to say, be sure to leave it down below. Leave a like and share it with your friends. Hope you had a good laugh as well. And we will catch you later. Bye. Ciao. One, and we're recording. Hey everyone, and oh fuck! <laughs> <laughs> wow, I literally we just started, just started. You know what, guys? Yeah, okay. you know, we're we're done with the channel. Just quit it. <laughs> hey everyone, and welcome to the very first real. Oh, you're kidding me! Are you seriously? Hi everyone, Silas here from the Real Scrapers crew. Real Scrapers. <laughs> <laughs> can, can we get this right at any point? <laughs>